I'm really excited to tell you about the Rhythmic Movement Sensory Framework. This is an evidence-based, very highly structured approach. It's an approach that I've put together over the last few years. And this framework is a very specific framework in terms of how you can use rhythmic movement for your students. And I'm also going to talk a little bit in this video about the benefits. I'm going to make this a very quick video. So this is a very quick introduction video about the framework. I have a lot more training and a lot more courses on my website at BridgetNicholson.com. So let's talk about this. Movement is essential for development and learning. If you're a parent or an educator, therapist, teacher, and you work with any kind of child, it doesn't matter whether your, child ha your children have special needs or they don't have special needs, every single child needs movement. I've worked for many years with children who have very significant physical disabilities and even children who are in wheelchairs need as much movement as they can possibly get during the day. And I understand the limitations of being in a wheelchair, but every child, doesn't matter who they are, need, needs a lot of movement. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the types of movement in this quick video. So why is movement important? And we are going to talk a little bit about the research. I want to talk about the difference between structured and unstructured movement. And there really is a very big difference. And children need both kinds of movement. They need both structured and unstructured movement. Let's first of all talk about unstructured movement. This video, more specifically, the content of this is about structured movement, a highly structured program. But I can never talk about highly structured movement and about a specific movement program without talking about the essential need for unstructured movement. Every child needs unstructured movement. They need to be able to explore. They need to be able to play. They need to be able to see what their bodies can do. They need to learn motor planning without us telling them what to do. They need to learn how to plan their bodies and they need to learn those motor, those motor movements and how to do things without instruction and without verbally people verbally telling them what to do or showing them what to do. There is a place for instruction and for more structured movement training. But, but for unstructured movement, children really need to be able to move their bodies in their own ways and they need to be able to explore in their different environments, both in the home environment and indoors as well as outdoors. They need a lot of access to different environments, indoor environments and outdoor environments, and a very wide range of outdoor environments. They need to have the opportunity for spontaneous activities, lots of physical activity, lots of self-directed activities. They need to have places where they can just really make use of their creativity. And I think depending on where you live in the world and which kinds of, if you have your own children or if you work with children or both, I think that there are so many moves towards fancy playgrounds or specialized activities or specialized sports or movement activities or classes. And I think we're kind of getting away from children just going out into a place where there are no toys and just outdoors and logs and sticks and sand and soil and leaves and, and wood and letting children just be creative with what's out there instead of having lots of toys that do things and lots of playground activities that's that are set up for specific movement. So I just think creativity is something that's essential with movement. Children need to be able to discover their own capabilities. They need to move their bodies to see what their bodies can do and to develop those motor plans without us hovering over them all the time. So obviously we need to be safe. We're not gonna let kids go out and do all kinds of things without, without watching them. But they need to really be able to naturally engage with their surroundings and interact with objects and interact with different environments. And we need to give them the freedom to do that. I, I really think kids need to get outdoors more and they need to get messy and they need to go and play with a lot of outdoor things and outdoor objects and playgrounds as well. I know in some parts of the world, children don't have access to a lot of playgrounds. So I, I fully understand that. And children grow up with different options and different opportunities. But really, I want to just encourage you to let children make a mess, go outside, play, play messy, random, creatively, instead of adult directed play and movement. They need to have imagination, creativity, and problem solving, obviously within safety and within the limits of what you need to do to not only keep those kids safe, but also keep 
the environment looking good. You don't want children to be using the whole house as a climbing playground. But at the same time, you know, children shouldn't be in sterile environments where they're not able to move or jump or throw something around. And, and you know, it's, it depends on the kinds of homes that children are in. But they really, within the limits of safety, they need to be able to climb and, and jump and do things. They obviously are going to develop their own proprioception, their spatial awareness, motor skills, and their balance. And if they're never allowed to climb and explore what their bodies can do, they're going to be very limited with doing the, these, with developing these skills. And the other thing is the more they're on screens, I guarantee you they're not going to develop these skills very well because there are no activities on the screen that will teach their child their own body proprioception and spatial awareness and these motor skills. This is one of my best pictures ever. Children have to be messy. We have to allow kids to indoors and outdoors be messy. And when I say big body sensory experiences, I really want to emphasize this big body sensory experiences because honestly, I get so tired of seeing children in, in very nice classroom environments where they have a little sensory tray. I'm not saying that that has no value. I think sensory trays are can be fun and they can be fun for kids to play in so you can have a, a tray of rice and flour and sand but children need big body sensory they need to be able to get mud and soil all over them or they need to get into sand and play in sand and get it on their feet and on their legs so i know if you're in a school environment it's not that easy to let the kids be super messy i understand that but certainly if you're a parent in a home environment let your kids play in the mud and let them play in the sand and let them be messy and you know, it's apart from the fact that it's really good for their immune systems, they really have to have a lot of sensory ex experiences. And also self-expression. I, I look at this picture and I think of how this kid is so happy. When children are playing outside, most children, not everyone, I, I understand when children have sensory issues or sensory sensitivities, for some children that might be a nightmare, but you can find ways of children involved, getting involved in big body sensory experiences and lear learning to love it or loving certain types of sensory experiences. So for some children, mud all over their body they may hate, but maybe they would love shaving cream, you know, on their bodies. Or maybe they'd love to do a huge big mural with uh, hand paint. So anyway, I, I think we could talk for for a long time just about this slide and about big body sensory experiences. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about a, stru a highly structured movement. So that's not what this video is about. This video now is about highly structured movement. So I want to talk in more detail about structured movement and about specifically a program that will allow you in a graded structured way to start at level one and move through the levels with your students. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about structured. I mean structured graded, scaffolded, with support, with instruction. So it's very different than the unstructured movement I was just talking about. This now is far more adult directed and controlled, and I think children need both of these. I do want to talk very briefly about research. I have a wonderful, wonderful growing research document on my courses, and it grows constantly because every time I find new research, I add the new research on. And then people that are in my courses will get an update on the new research that's being put in. So every time I add to the courses, I end up sending it out to, to you guys that are in the courses. And what it means is you get to be up to date with the most current research and research that's really supporting what you're doing with this rhythmic movement program. So I just want to tell you, if you have worked with, uh, with children, especially children with special needs, but really this all of this applies to all children. We know that movement training and motor skills training is essential for a lot of different reasons. So when we were talking earlier about body and space and spatial relations and kinesthesia and motor planning, there are, there are many different aspects of motor control that children will learn with a motor training program and with movement and with balance activities. But I really want to highlight the need for rhythm as well as movement and different kinds of movement. So as we're talking about this, I will be talking about movement, but I just want to talk about rhythm especially. When you look at the research, and I'm going to put this word up really big here on the screen. Rhythm is the research that shows that rhythm impacts learning is very overwhelming. 
it's very clear in the research that rhythm can make a significantly positive impact on all kinds of learning. So these are the areas. And every single phrase here comes specifically from a research study. So rhythm helps with or is positively correlated with language and literacy, receptive grammar proficiency, reading skills, attention, inhibition, and cognitive functioning, rapid naming, language, and communication, phonological awareness and memory. Again, these come directly out of research papers. And obviously the research papers are very long and complex, but the document that I have on my courses have not only the research studies that you can look at, but also I have summarized a lot of them. And here are some more. Subcortical auditory processing and literacy skills, comprehension, speed and accuracy, sensory motor regulation, sympathetic activity and self-modulation, motor functioning, and motor language and personal skills. Again, all from research. The research is fascinating. And honestly, if ever you need a reasoning or a rationale for implementing these strategies in the classroom, there is so much research that backs this up. There, there's masses of research. When I look at research on, on overall sensory approaches in the classroom, it's kind of hit and miss. It's all over the place. It's not very conclusive. The, 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 the research that talks about overall sensory approaches is not conclusive in, in every research study. But I'll tell you, the rhythm research is absolutely conclusive. I've, I've never seen a study on rhythm that says it had no impact on brain function and learning. Every, every research study that I've seen on rhythm to do with children says that research has a positive impact on all of these aspects. So let's talk about the Movement, Music and Rhythm program. This is a program that I put together a few years ago and I want to tell you a little bit about what this looks like. I'm going to switch to the actual website now. Go to bodybraintech.com and in the menu you'll see two sections, Body and Brain and Writing Assessment. The Rhythmic Movement program is under Body and Brain you will see that there are different aspects to the Rhythmic Movement Program. If you go to bodybraintech.com, you can go to, on the menu, you'll see that there's Body and Brain and Writing Assessment. The Rhythmic Movement Program is under Body and Brain and Sensory Regulation. There are various aspects to this and various parts of the Rhythmic Movement Program. If you go to my website at bridgetnicholson.com, you'll see that there's a whole course on the Rhythmic Movement Sensory Regulation Program. So at the moment, I'm not able to tell you how that all works, but I do want to talk to you about the framework. So back here on the Body Brain Tech website, I'll just, for those of you that haven't seen the Rhythmic Movement Program, the one, the one part of this that I will show you is the follow along videos. But as I said, on the courses, there's a lot more information. So under follow along videos, there are all kinds of videos here that your children can follow along with. And I'm going to discuss with you soon about what the movement and sound levels are. This is part of the framework and the gradually increasing complexity. I will, I'm just going to show you one of these videos just so you can see that it's a, what the follow along is. I'll click on neon fun here and let's choose uh, firework fun. So what children do is that they watch the child on the video and then they follow along with the movements. The movements have all been very specifically selected for specific reasons. But watch this video for a moment. So that video is part of the Neon Fun series, and you'll see here that under Neon Fun, it's movement level three and sound level three. Let's talk a little bit about those movement and sound levels. If you take a look at this chart, this is a chart that can be used with your students so that they can understand 
what the movement and sound levels are. It's very important to look at the structure of this because it is a highly structured movement program. And what you really should be doing with your students is starting off at movement level one and then going up the movement levels and going up in terms of sound level complexity. So movement level one is very simple. One movement repeated over and over again. Movement level two is more complex and then up to movement level four and the same with sound levels, gradually increasing complexity. So this grid really shows you that there are combinations of movement and sound. M1 is movement one, S1 is sound level one, and then there are all the various combinations all the way up to the most complex, which would be M4, S4. You will see on Body Brain Tech, if you go to, again, if you go back to Body and Brain and you go to Sensory Regulation, you'll see that there is an overview. And also under Rhythmic Movement, there is information about the movements and sound levels, as well as some basic information about the program. A lot more information is on my courses that I mentioned earlier. So if you go to movement and sound levels, it will tell you in detail here what movement level one is, as well as example videos of each different level of movement and also movement uh, sound levels with the sound examples. So it just shows you that the this is a very highly structured program in a lot of ways movement and sound levels, as well as the way that you implement it. And that's the reason that I'm talking about this framework. So when I said to you that it's based on movement and sound level, the, the complexity of the videos in terms of movement and sound level does, the, the complexity does gradually increase over, over those different movement and sound levels. However, when you run this program with your students and when you look at how to implement, I know that when I first put all of these videos on, there was, and the videos were growing and there were lots more options, on the Body Brain Tech website, there, there's not a lot of structure in terms of how it's used. And part of that is everyone's going to use these videos differently because, first of all, on one of the most basic levels, some children are younger and some children are older, and some of the older children are not going to want to do the videos that are, are more suited towards younger children. And then the other thing is, so we, at the moment, have, in the framework, we have time-based and skill-based. We're also going to have videos that are set up according to more of a generalized age level. So I'm really just, at the moment, going to categorize it into younger versus older students. And I'm not even going to say elementary age or middle school age. I'm, I'm just going, because right now it really doesn't apply to high school. It's really more elementary to middle age, but I'm really going to talk about younger or older. But the way we, the way I have set it up right now is that the framework has time-based options and skill-based options. So if you are a teacher and you know that before academic activities, you can, you can take three minutes to do a highly structured movement session with your children, you could go straight here to the time-based framework section and you could run through all the three minute sections, uh, three minute routines. If you want to work on specific skills, so if you want to work on crossing the midline for a month or two months with your students, you can specifically go to crossing midline. It does also work in sequence through the movement and sound level. So it's not like you would have to do crossing midline and jump to complex videos. You can start at the most simple crossing midline level. This is the rhythmic movement sensory framework that I'm talking about, and this is how it works. So this is on my BridgetNicholson.com training site, and it's under the membership section. And once you have a membership, you can go down here onto the sensory framework. And this is where you'll find, I'm going to enlarge this a little bit here for you. This is where you're going to find those initial categories. So there's one minute, two minute, three minute, and five minute. And then there are the other categories and the other skill levels, balance, crossing, midline, lateral flexion, and all the others that I spoke about. And we are also going to have a section for younger students, younger and older. I, I'm just going to call it younger and older, and then you can hone in on that based on, on the age of your students. So let's look at the three minutes. What you'll find is the three minutes Every one of these, it starts off at movement level one, sound level one, and you'll see it gradually increases in complexity. So further down here, it's M2, S2. 
on the right side here, it's even more complex with the more complex movement levels and sound levels. So if you click on one of these, uh, let's just choose superpowers. I'm going to click on this. This is movement level three, sound level two. Every one of these routines is three minutes or maybe three minutes and a few seconds. So it might be a little bit over three minutes, but it's no more than, it's not up to four, four minutes. So each one of these routines, they run on YouTube, but it starts off with one video, which in typically is a getting started video. And then there are however many videos that are needed to make up that time. And then generally there's a calming down video. So the very first video is kind of an arousal. The very first video is more of an arousal, wake up, alertness video. I'll actually show you what this looks like. Some of the sounds are a little bit, they're very much alerting sounds to increase awareness and to get ready for structured movement. So what it is, is it's only 13 seconds, but it's, it's meant to get kids to just wiggle, jiggle, move their bodies around. Right now, they're not, they don't have to follow the rhythm. They just need to, there's an attention getting sound. There's a move, jiggle, wiggle your body. And then there's a, a ending sound to say we're ready to do the next video. So watch what this is. If you go to balance, you will find that each one of these also gives you an idea of how many minutes each routine takes. There are differences in time because on each level, there are specific numbers of videos for each level. So if we look at this balance here, for instance, it says seven minutes, but that's because there are this number of videos that actually work on balance at that specific movement level. This is movement level three and sound level one. So anyway, that's, that's the basis of the framework. It means it's a starting point for you. And you as a teacher, as a therapist and educator, you might be working with a small number of children. You might have an entire classroom of kids, or you might be a parent at home with one or two kids. And if you really need to know what a starting point is, you really, first of all, need to decide are you going to work on a basis of time? How much time do you have available before something's going to happen? I really like the idea of doing rhythmic movement videos and movements following the videos right before something that may be an academic activity, a learning activity. If you're at home, I understand because I have kids of my own and I've had kids with special needs of my own. I understand how crazy things get at home. But even if you do it together as a family and you did a, a three-minute three minute routine before sitting down and doing homework. So when your kids get home from school, all of you do the three-minute routines and it's a lot of fun. You know, I think you as adults are going to have trouble with some of these as well. You know, even just doing 30 seconds of jumping jacks, you may end up out of breath. You may have the coordination of doing it, but it's going to be some physical activity. It's not just all very... Um, it's not all just quiet and easy. Some of it's jumping. Some of it's uh, quite taxing uh, cardiovascular in, in terms of cardiovascular. So I'm just saying, I, I think that adults should be doing these videos with the children. I think you should, I think doing the, the highly structured movement and rhythm, it's a lot of focus. It's a lot of thought. It's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of motor planning and doing that right before an academic and learning activity or before doing homework, even before doing supper at night in the home. I know that probably is a really crazy time, so maybe that would never work. But, you know, I know if I had something in the crock pot and I was able to say, just carve out three minutes before we eat. Maybe if that becomes a regular routine, maybe your kids are going to sit at the dinner table and not fall off their chairs and not drop their fork 50 times. And maybe they're going to sit and be more calm and more focused because maybe these videos will regulate your children. 
There are some really nice calming down videos as well. So we will be putting calming videos on as well. You'll see on the Body Brain Tech website under sensory regulation, you'll see that there's ready for calm videos, sounds and videos for calming. So thank you very much for watching this video this long. I was hoping to make this a much briefer video, but unfortunately I, there's, I just had to cover all of those things. Uh, and I will make this into a PDF as well, so you should be able to find a PDF for this in the notes under this video and on the, uh, on the courses. I would love your feedback. I'd love to know if you have used this with your students. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to have your suggestions and your opinions, so please reach out to me. If you are interested in the framework, it is on, as I said to you, it's on the, the membership on my training site. So this is the section where you'd find the framework. There are also access to lots of webinar and course information. And then one thing that I really want to get going in extensively is this online community and forum, because I think that we can all learn from each other and talk about what we're all doing with children really around the world because all children around the world can benefit from these kinds of approaches. So I would love to have you join and give your feedback and just hear how you are using this program with your children. Thank you.